Chapter 3 Moblin Ambush The half a dozen moblins slowly approached after the last of them had stepped into view, each one carrying a spear. There had been an increasing number of sightings of these and other strange creatures in the past several months, and although the descriptions were always different, the common theme was always violence. They would randomly attack travelers, or in some cases, like apparently what was happening today, chase down an innocent person for nothing other than the pleasure of doing so. Has the chase ended? One of them asked as the group stopped. Do we get to take her now? Ganondorf said not till her strength was gone, another replied. We have made sure she cannot run away again. Any idiot could see that this old woman wasn't going anywhere. She was exhausted, and although the dead branches only made small scratches, a whole night of running blindly through them could quickly add up. On her own, she would probably survive after having some food and rest, but it was pretty reasonable to assume that these moblins were not going to provide either for her. What about them? Another moblin asked while pointing. They do not appear to be feeble. Ignore them, the first one answered. We have weapons and greater numbers. They will flee like all cowards of this land, and we will take what we want. Are they talking about us? Aghanim asked as the moblins resumed approaching. I think so, Link replied. But if they think we're going to just let them hurt this old lady, they've got another thing coming. They nodded to each other and then stood up, causing the small horde of moblins to stop again when the two of them moved between the creatures and the old woman. The creatures hesitated again, obviously expecting them to just run away as their leader predicted, but then they growled and readied their spears. Apparently, the time for talking was over, as the moblins rushed forward, but the creatures were probably not expecting to be met with a boomerang and a fireball flying at them. The first moblin cried out as the boomerang struck it in the forehead, knocking it off its feet, and he did not move again as the weapon returned to Ling's hand. As for the one standing next to it, the ball of flame struck it in the chest, causing the creature to scream and run away while its body was completely engulfed in flames. The others were caught completely off guard by this, but seemed to refocus once the inflamed one ran right into a tree and fell over. Get them! The nearest one yelled. Link rolled out of the way as the closest one to him swung his spear, and then he used the boomerang like a sword, swinging it at the moblin's legs and knocking the creature down. The next creature stabbed at him, but he deflected it with his boomerang and rushed forward, tackling the moblin to the ground. The creature used the momentum to its advantage, grabbing its feet under Link's stomach and using it to throw the young man so that he flipped forward and landed on his back. As for Aghanim, he vanished just as the creature nearest to him was stabbing, reappearing behind it and grabbing hold of the next moblin's spear. The next creature gasped as he spun around and kicked it in the chest, claiming its weapon as it was knocked down, and then he turned back and tossed it, making the first moblin yelp as the point sunk into its back. The robed wizard was then turning around to deal with the second one, but it was his turn to cry out in surprise as it tackled him to the ground. Both of Link's moblins were back on their feet now, and he really wished he had a sword as he deflected stab after stab by continuing to use the boomerang as a blade. An opening appeared after he ducked down to avoid a wild swing, and he tossed the boomerang, solving one of his problems when the weapon struck the creature in the throat, the moblin gasping as it collapsed to the ground. However, the other creature hit him in the arm with a spear pole, making him unable to catch the returning weapon. It fell to the ground a short distance away, but instead of getting it back, he had to grab the moblin's spear to keep it from stabbing him. Meanwhile, Aghanim continued to struggle with the creature that tackled him, the moblin was physically stronger than him, and its clawed fingers slowly moved towards his throat while he tried to push them back. He vanished a couple of times to try and get away, but since the creature was touching him, it came along for the ride, leaving him in the same predicament. Now the claws were only inches from his throat, and it appeared that the creature was going to win. But as stated before, fire and vanishing were not his only tricks. I have a surprise for you, the robed wizard groaned as magic crackled at his fingers. Hechizo! The creature gasped as it was engulfed in a small flash of light, and when the light faded, Aghanim was no longer struggling with a moblin, but a gelatinous blue bot creature. The robed wizard laughed a little as the confused creature moved about, but then a ball of flame from both hands ended its suffering. Its gelatinous body was quickly incinerated, and now Aghanim could easily push the ashes away as he got to his feet. Link was having a slightly more difficult time as he struggled with the stocky moblin for control of its spear, 
each trying to push the other off balance while pulling on the weapon. They swung each other around, moving back and forth across the road until the young man leaned back before headbutting the creature. The impact left both of them dazed for a moment, but the moblin recovered first, swinging its spear, but still being dazed enough so that the pole hit Link's legs instead of the point going across his chest. The young man was knocked off his feet, and the creature raised the spear over its head to finish him when a ball of flame hit its hands. The moblin groaned as it dropped the spear, giving Link enough time to both roll over to grab his fallen boomerang and toss it. His aim was off, so the weapon flew right past the creature's head, making it laugh as it prepared to attack, but then the boomerang returned. It slammed into the back of the moblin's head with a loud crack, and once it fell, the creature did not move again. The battle was over, with Link and Aghanim victorious, and now maybe they could figure out what was going on. I'll check these creatures for loot, Link said after Aghanim helped him up. You go see what you can do about the old woman. Picking up his boomerang and putting it back on his belt, the young man did a quick search of the moblin's bodies to see if they had any valuables, while the robed wizard returned to the old woman who had not moved from where she fell. Aside from their weapons and the clothes on their backs, the creatures had nothing, so he returned to the others just as Aghanim was helping the old woman sit up. I only know how to heal myself through magic, he explained while taking a file of blue liquid out from under his robe. Now this might not taste very good, but it should keep you alive. There was only a tiny amount of liquid left inside the file, which was no surprise given how expensive the components were, along with how difficult it was to make. But regardless of how much was left, the robe wizard poured the contents into her mouth, and as expected, she coughed from the incredibly bitter taste. No sooner had she swallowed the potion, when some of the cuts on her body began to fade away. There was still a good number left when the process was finished, but now at least she could move and breathe properly. Oh, thank you, boys, she said with a tired tone. I thought old Impa had finally taken her last steps. Ask her what was this all about, Aghanim? Link asked as he kneeled down with them. Why were a half dozen moblins chasing you, old woman? Give her a moment, Link, Aghanim replied. The life potion takes time to finish working, and remember, she didn't have anything close to a full dose. I will be fine now, young wizard. Impa answered. And a ranger as well. This chase might have been a blessing in disguise. I am Impa, nursemaid of Princess Zelda of Hyrule. Something terrible has happened and I have much to tell you, but first, we must get away from this road. Those moblins might not be the only ones Ganondorf will send after me. Ganondorf? Link asked as they helped her up. The moblins said that name too. Isn't he that foreigner with green skin? We should take her to the cave, Aghanim interrupted. She can answer all of our questions there, and at least we'll be hidden if any more moblins come looking. Yes, I will tell you all that I know, Impa replied, leaning on them as they started walking. But we must be swift. Ganondorf has spies everywhere, and it will not take long before he discovers that his servants have failed. I hate to burden you boys like this, but I will be of little use in my current condition so I have no choice but to place the fate of Hyrule on your shoulders.